I will be going over the exhalation valve or the floating exhalation valve. Some people call it a active exhalation valve, but all activation valves are active. So first let's go over your traditional exhalation valve and I'm going to use the example volume control ventilation. So during volume control ventilation I have an inspiratory and expiratory phase. So my inspiratory and expiratory phase is based on a inspiratory time setting, a IE ratio setting, or percent inspiratory time. And as you notice from this picture here you can see the settings and I have an IE ratio so percentage uh, my breath is going to be inspiratory, that other percent is going to be expiratory. So and if you notice my inspiratory time, I'm going to circle here, is 1.73 seconds. So what happens during this inspiratory phase, my expiratory valve is actually going to be closed for that 1.73 seconds. So the patient's locked out. They won't be able to an exhale during this one point. 73 seconds unless they set up the high pressure threshold. So I'm going to show an example. So here's just our waveforms and we're going to look at this blue pressure waveform here. So here's my blue pressure waveform and we'll look at a peak inspiratory pressure and we also might want to look at tidal volume in the next example, the next slide. So during this inspiratory phase here the exhalation valve is closed and the patient can't exhale unless they get to the high pressure threshold setting. This is usually an alarm setting and then after the alarm setting there's another safety backup setting too. I would have to get up to that before inspirations drop. However, during my expiratory phase I'm just going to change my colors to this red or raspberry color. During these expiratory phases, the expiratory valve is open. So it's always active. It's, um, it closes and um, shut, it closes and opens based on a time interval. This is another example, and what this shows is the patient trying to exhale sooner, or the patient actually coughing. So this is a premature termination of the breath. So what we'll see is this normal inspiratory phase, and what's highlighted, it's kind of hard to see with this image, but this breath is highlighted here. And as you notice, the breath is a lot skinnier, and the patient's coughing during this inspiratory phase. And this is hitting the high pressure threshold here at 40, and it's ending the breath prematurely. So that's the only way the patient's allowed to exhale. What we also have highlighted in the bottom right hand corner is the exhale tidal volume. And in this volume control ventilation, we're in volume control and we're targeting 650. So the ventilator set for 650, we're delivering 650. This is the same patient and they have a series of coughs. And as you notice, that the breast prematurely terminated and this caused a dramatic drop in tidal volume. Since all the flow couldn't be delivered, breaths are much shorter, I do not have tidal volume delivery. Now this leads to a lot of patient ventilator asynchrony, agitation, discomfort, and unfortunately what it usually leads to is a bolus of sedation. So it ends up in over sedating the patient or sometimes paralyzing the patient, which leads to a longer ventilator length of the engineering and now exhalation valves are considered floating exhalation valves. However, exhalation valves that use this floating can only be activated in pressure control ventilation. You can't use them in volume control. It doesn't. It still locks out during the inspiratory phase and volume control. I'll go over more in detail. Here's just an example of a floating exhalation valve and this is from a Vita ventilator. And I, I'm just going to kind of trace stuff. It has this diaphragm here, and this is the components, basically, this area right here. And what it does is it just moves up and down. 
So that's why they call it a floating exhalation valve. It just kind of moves up and down based on pressure changes. changes. So here's my little sketch. I'm not an engineer or a architect or a drafter. This is just an example of my expiration valve. So expiratory flow, I'm just going to change my flow. Comes out. And here's my valve. I'm just going to highlight it in orange here. So there's a difference between a closed valve and a controlled valve. So during volume control ventilation, it's a close during my inspiratory phase based on time, which I already talked about. However, during pressure control ventilation, it is a controlled expiratory valve. And how it's controlled is, I'm just going to erase, the, erase something, sorry. Let's redraw it right here. There we go. So what happens during pressure control ventilation, the pressure is, um, the expiratory valve, is what happens is the valve is never occluded completely. So the closing pressure of this valve is equal to the corresponding peep level or the inspiratory pressure itself. So what happens is these valves are very um, responsive. It's just the microprocessors and the ventilators these days are able to do this. So if I have a pressure control of 20 centimeters of water, then during my inspiratory phase, the valve is held closed by 20 centimeters of water. And during my expiratory phase, let's just make that blue. So my peep is set at 5. The patient's allowed to exhale, but there's still going to be the PEEP of 5 also. Now, also with this controlled expiratory valve, it is usually based on different manufacturers of ventilators have different uh, releases of the pressure. But what's common is if the patient tries to exhale during the inspiratory phase and generates a pressure of usually plus two to plus three centimeters of water, that extra pressure is let through. So this is a floating exhalation valve. So these pressures are dumped or released. And that additional um, pressure control of 20 is just gonna seal it again. So it's kind of hard to explain with my poor drawing. But during pressure control ventilation, uh, this floating exhalation valve, that's when it works because the pressure control level is the closing pressure itself. And it allows for the patient to exhale. So this allows for your biphasic ventilation, your unhindered spontaneous breathing. And I'll demonstrate in the video coming up how will you check to see if your ventilator actually has a floating exhalation valve. I'm going to demonstrate how to check to see if your ventilator has a floating exhalation valve. So the easiest way to do this is of course get your ventilator and a test lung. So I have my ventilator and test lung and I'm going to put it in a pressure base mode and as you notice in the top right hand corner I'm in pressure control. The floating exhalation valve only works in pressure base modes. Next I'm going to go under my controls And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my inspiratory time. So as you see with my cursor, here's my inspiratory time percent. I'm just going to increase this, and we'll look at our IE ratio here. And I'm just going to lengthen this as long as possible. It just makes it easier for analysis. And I'm going to close that out. And we're going to look at this yellow pressure waveform here. 
And as you notice, my inspiratory phase is quite longer, my inspiratory time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squeeze my test lung during this inspiratory phase. And as you can see, I basically can breathe on top of the inspiratory phase. So this is biphasic ventilation here, and I do have a floating exhalation valve. So this is how I will evaluate if the ventilator has a floating exhalation valve. 